By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a pretty interesting match for you because we're going to look at two decks that completely revolve around specific cards. The first deck is Dreamwalker. It's a deck completely built around underworld dreams and that is going to take on Living Plains and obviously that deck is built around the card Living Plains from Legends. Now before I jump into the deck deck, I would just like to point out that this match is an X points match and here you can see their point system overview. Now what is X points? Just to explain it very briefly for you, it is a format where you can spend 10 points on cards that have points uh, allocated to them. So for example, if I want to play Ancestral Recall, that's going to cost me five points out of my total of 10 points. So I can play Ancestral Recall and Black Lotus, then I've already spent eight points and I can only spend two more points on cards. So for example, it's impossible to play Black Lotus and um, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist in the same deck with this point system. Now, if you want to know more about X points, about the format, about, you know, the rules and all that, please check the description below because there you can also find a link to their Facebook page. Talking about the description below, if you want to go straight to the games, if you want to skip the deck tech, again, check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games, click on there and that will take you straight to the games. And as for here, we are going to start with the deck tech and I'm going to start with the deck Dreamwalker. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck by Rob Hackney. So this is called Dreamwalker. And as you can see, it is blue, it is red, and it is black. Now, obviously, this deck is built around the card Underworld Dreams, right? It's an enchantment from Legends. It's three black to cast. So you gotta be pretty heavy on the black mana. And what it does is it gives your opponent, or your opponent takes damage, I should say, every time he or she draws a card, right? So with Underworld Dreams on the table, your opponent will just take one damage each draw step. And then of course, when you play with Underworld Dreams, you wanna go and look for cards that kind of force your opponent to draw more than just that one card, because then you can deal extra damage, right? So what you see a lot in these decks are draw seven spells, like the Time Twister and the Wheel of Fortune. So Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister, both of those cards force your opponent to draw seven new cards. That means seven damage when you have an Underworld Dreams out. But now imagine that you have two Underworld Dreams out. That means 14 damage. Imagine combining this with the Black Vice. That's even extra damage. So that, you know, as soon as you draw a draw seven with an Underworld Dreams deck, you've usually won the game. I mean, it's that explosive. But of course, there are more ways to force your opponent to draw cards. There's also a card called Winds of Change. Winds of Change is a card, just one red mana, that, re that says, you know, all the cards in your hand, you've got to shuffle them back into your library, and then you've got to draw that amount of cards. So if you've got five cards in hand, for example, you've got to shuffle them back in your library, and you've got to draw five new ones. And that also means that your opponent will then take five damage. Because again, remember, with an Underworld Dreams on the board, your opponent takes one damage for every single card that they draw. So, I mean, it can get out of hand really, really quickly. And we also see, um, of course, Howling Mines in this deck. And Howling Mine, of course, another card that allows you to draw more cards. So more card draw is very good for this deck. This is what this deck wants to do. And I think if you're Rob Hackney, with a lot of these type of decks, what you want to do is get your Howling Mine out as fast as possible. Because as long as you draw into a lot of cards, then you're, then you're fine. And you're dealing damage to your opponent and you're drawing probably into the pieces that you want to find. So I'm not surprised that this deck is playing without any creatures. And maybe you're even wondering, but he's not even playing with Maze of If, he's not even playing with Moat or Wrath of God or... No, because that is not what this deck is about. This is actually a pretty aggro deck. And maybe you're surprised because usually in aggro deck you see a lot of cheap creatures, but this deck is very explosive and can win a game very quickly. I think if this game is working, we're going to see some very short games. Of course, I hope not. I, I always love to see a lot of interaction, but when this deck is working, it's pretty much game over pretty quickly. Now, um, I was saying he's not playing with Wrath of God or Moat or anything, but he is playing with an Abyss, which is, of course, a fantastic card against creature decks. But Abyss, I mean, he's only playing a single uh, Abyss, you know? So it's not like he's built his deck around the Abyss. It's really focused on that Underworld Dreams forcing your opponent to draw as many cards as possible and then killing your opponent. Now, a nice thing I would like to point out, because that's one of the first things I've noticed when I looked at this list, is the fact that it's got three recalls in this list. I mean, that was really a surprise. Three recalls, not a single regrowth. Um, recall is, of course, a card from Legends that allows you 
to bring back cards from your graveyard, but you also have to discard cards for that. Now, I don't think that Rob minds discarding cards too much because there's so much card draw in his deck, you know, what he really wants is get those draw sevens back from the bin and play them out again. So it's probably one of the reasons why they're in there to get back his Wheel of Fortune, his Time Twister, also to get back uh, his Winds of Change and possibly to get back his Underworld Dreams or his Howling Minds if they get destroyed early in the game. So this is the deck of, um, of Rob. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Guillaume. Oh man, what an interesting deck this is. Well, I mean, maybe I'm saying it's interesting because of Living Plane, because I'm just a big fan of Living Plane. So Living Plane is an enchant world from Legends. Beautiful art, and basically what it does, it turns all the lands on the battlefield into 1-1 one -one creatures, all the lands. They're still lands, they still have their ability, like a Pendlehaven can still pump a 1-1. One -one. Um, talking about Pendlehaven, we do see one in this deck. I think it can be quite good in a Living Plains deck. Um, it's still, you know, a Maze of If can still do what a Maze of If does, but it's also a 1-1 one -one creature. And the thing is, once your lands become creatures, they are super vulnerable for removal. For example, a Triskelion can now kill three lands, right? Because the lands are 1-1. One -one. So it can destroy three lands. But also we see Falling Star, which is um, a card that you can flip just like a Chaos Orb from a feet high, and everything it hits takes three damage. Now there's a special rule that when you put the cards next to each other that you want to target with Falling Star, that they cannot overlap each other. So uh, some people say you can even hit eight targets with one Falling Star. I think if you can hit six, you're already really, really good at flipping a Falling Star. But I think if you just hit two, it's already great, right? And rem remember, everything that Falling Star hits gets three damage. So with one Falling Star, when Living Plane is out, you could potentially destroy six lands, right? That is just insane if you manage to do that. But before um, uh, Guillaume starts with his Living Plane shenanigans, what he does before that is a bit more straightforward because that is just land destruction. He's playing four Stone Rains, four Ice Storms. So he's gonna play out a Lanower Elf. Then in turn two, he's gonna play out a Stone Rain or an Ice Storm. Turn four, he's gonna play out his Living Plane, right? And then maybe turn five, he's gonna play out Trike. And if, if he gets the right ramp going, he can just go a lot faster than his opponent, right? Because can you imagine Rob is playing out a land, then uh, Guillaume is gonna go in his second turn, he's gonna, he's played a lot of elves in his first turn, let's say that he's managed to do that, which is not uncommon because he's got seven one drop mana dorks then he'll be able to play a Stone Rain. So that means he takes a land away from his opponent and he's gone up a land, or up a mana, I should say, because he has that mana dork. And then in his turn three, he will have four mana and his opponent will only have two mana. And then he can play out a Living Plane or he can play out an Urnum Jin, you know, and then turn five, you know, it, it just can get out of hand very, very quickly. Now, what's so interesting about this matchup is that Rob Hackney is playing with Dark Ritual. I think Dark Ritual is going to be a super good card for Rob in this matchup because Dark Ritual allows him to get three mana out of one single land, right? One black mana makes three black mana and that will maybe allow him to, you know, get that Underworld Dreams out that he needs or maybe, you know, get uh, two Howling Mines out in a turn instead of one. So it will just allow him to give him that little gap once Guillaume is in that land destruction to kind of maybe bounce back. And that's what I'm really interested in in this uh, uh, matchup is I think both decks have a very strong battle plan. And when both decks draw into what they want to draw into, they will probably win the game. But what's going to be interesting for me is to see what happens if both decks are drawing what they want to draw, who's going to win then? And what happens if one deck gets ahead really, really early on, will the other deck be able to bounce back? I think not, but it would be so interesting to see if that is actually possible. Okay, so now we've watched, looked at both of the decks, right? We've discussed both the decks, the deck of Rob Hackney, the deck of Guillaume, and now we're ready for the match. Let's see what deck works best, Dreamwalkers or Living Planes. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. There we see an Underground Sea tapping it, going into a Dark Ritual. No, he's taking it back. Okay, he is playing the Ritual. He's playing a Howling Mine. Now this is Atlantic, so that means it's a format with Mana Burn. So we see Rob here taking a damage, going to 19. Then we have Guillaume, he's gonna draw two cards because of the Howling Mine. 
and he's playing a forest. I'm expecting a mana dork here. Yeah, there we see a Birds of Paradise and a pass. So both of these decks are basically doing what they want to do early on. Are we already going to see... No, he's going to tap to take a damage. Are we going to see another Howling Mine here? Okay, we're going to see a Fower Stone. So a little bit of ramp here from Rob. And I'm kind of expecting him to play out an Underworld Dreams if he can find another Black Source next turn. There we see a first, of course, land removal from Guillaume, a Stone Rain on the Underground Sea in a past turn. So this is already kind of slowing Rob down. I mean, Rob really wants to get to that three black mana as soon as he can. But now he's delayed another Underground Sea. There we see another Felwer Stone and a Bolt on the Bird. Bolt the Bird! That's something that's been happening since 1993, as old as the game itself. Those poor birds. And now let's see what Rob can do. Playing a strip mine. I wonder if he's going to strip something. One green here for... Is that another mana dork? It's actually, yeah. It's another Lanawer Elves. And he's going to strip away a land here. Again, the Underground Sea. So it's going to be really tough for uh, Rob here to reach those three black mana to play his Underworld Dreams. Obviously, he is playing with Dark Ritual. So perhaps a Ritual can help him to reach those three black sources. Because if you're Rob, you just want to get your Underworld Dreams out as fast as possible. There's another City of Brass and a past turn. So I have to say, things are looking up for Guillaume here. Playing out another Mountain. Tapping 4, are we going to see a Living Plane? Yes, there's Living Plane. So remember, all the lands in play are now 1-1 one, one creatures. So the two City of Brasses on the side of Rob are now 1-1 one, one creatures. And if you're Rob, this is the point where you kind of get nervous. And he's going to draw two cards from his Howling Mine. So even if he finds another Black Source, um, like a Swamp, for example, he cannot tap it for mana. So there's the Bayou. He cannot tap it because of the Living Plane. Because it has Summoning Sickness. So he's taking a damage from his City of Brass. And he plays a Time Walk. That's brilliant, actually, because that'll allow him to and draw two extra cards, but also to start using that Bayou to play in Underworld Dreams. So he's going to draw two. What is he going to do here? Playing out, is that going to be another land? Volcanic Island with Summoning Sickness. He's going to tap one, take a damage. Going to go to 16. Tap his, both of his Felwer Stones. And he's going to play a Recall. Oh, and then he's going to recast his Time Walk. Oh, these shenanigans. These shenanigans. So he's going to take a damage. And now he can untap again and he can take another turn. Wow, so already two extra turns taken. Tapping three here. I think this is going to be an Underworld Dreams. Going to go to 13. There's an Underworld Dreams. And is he going to attack with the 1-1? One, one? Nope, he's just going to play another 1-1. One, one. No, he's going to take it back. He's a little bit undecisive here. Okay, plays another Howling Mine. I understand, and, and then he's going to play Winds of Change. Oh man, and this is kind of, you know, the party is starting on the side of, of Rob now with the Underworld Dreams on the table, and for Guillaume, it's going to be tough. So he's already taking damage here because he's going to draw from the Winds of Change. So he's dropped to 14, and Rob is still on 13. And remember, double Howling Mine on the board. So next turn, Guillaume is taking another three damage because he has to draw three cards from the double Howling Mine. So he's going to get his cards, and now there's a pass turn. So he's going to untap, and he's going to take three damage here from the Underworld Dreams because he draws three cards. So looking at his hand, what can he do here? 
I mean, I'm expecting him to basically kill those four lands. Tapping two. And there it's, I think, a Sylvan Library and a Birds of Paradise. This is not really good. If you're Guillaume, this is not what you want to be doing right now. Playing a Bolt on one of the lands. I would probably take the Bayou because that, yeah, exactly. That'll cut him off from the three black mana. That's what he wants to, want, uh, wants to have. But this is not ideal. I was kind of expecting a Falling Star here from Guillaume. But it's not in his hand. And so he has to pass turn. There's another tap for three. Another recall. So he's going to get his time walk back again. Oh, this is just sick. And here we can really see the recall doing work. So in the deck deck, I was like, oh, interesting. Three recalls. Why does he do that? And look at him now. He keeps getting back his time walk. He's going to drop to 11 from his own City of Brasses. And he's just going to take another turn. And he's going to play a bad land. So again, he's got three black mana next turn. Because now it's still a summoning six. But he's going to take his extra turn. This is quite interesting to look at, actually. Really see that recall time will go off together with that Underworld Dreams combo. It's quite interesting to see. And he's going to play another Badlands. So that one is Summoning Sickness. But he's got three black. I'm expecting him. Oh, even more problems here with another Howling Mine. And I'm kind of expecting him to play out another Underworld Dreams here. Mm, looks like he's going to do something else. Because he's not tapping three black. He's tapping his Volcanic Island and a Badlands instead. I really wonder. No, he's attacking actually with them. I thought he tapped them for mana. He's attacking with two. There we see a block on the Birds of Paradise. And probably he's going to kill the Badlands, right? Yeah, I'm expecting. I think it's a good strategy from, from Guillaume. Just to try to go for the black mana. Because if he can destroy the Badlands in his turn... And I do kind of feel that Guillaume is a little lucky here that he's not running into another Underworld Dreams because that would basically be the end of him. I mean, now he's going to draw four more cards. And that means he's going to drop to seven. And he's saying, okay, that's it. You've got it. <laughs> okay. So he's not finding, uh, finding the solution there. And that was game number one. So there you could really see ones that... You know, Underworld Dreams goes off and that recall and time walk was just insane. Anyway, both of these players are now going to go and dive into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And we've got Guillaume on the player starting with a Birds of Paradise. Are we going to see a Bolt from Rob? I mean, it must be one of the most old school things you can do, right? Yeah, here we go. A Bolt the Bird! I really think it's one of the most old school moves you can make, right? Let me know in the comments below, what do you think is the most old school move to make? Would it be turn one ancestral recall or something? Anyway, we see Sylvan Library here being played out by Guillaume. So it's a pretty decent start for him. Unfortunately, th that birds couldn't stick because then he would have had three mana. He could have played out an Ice Storm or a Stone Rain, but that's just not going to happen. Let's see if Rob can find a Howling Mind. That's usually his MO on turn number two. And that's what you want to do, of course, with your Underworld Dreams deck. He's a little bit in the tank here, trying to choose what land to play out. Playing a basic Swamp Tapping, going for a Howling Mine and pass turn. So that means two cards. The thing with a Howling Mine is, oh, and this is interesting, because there's a Sylvan on the board, his Sylvan just got a little bit better because he can look at the top four cards, pick two and draw those. Now, usually when there's a Howling Mine on the board, you think, oh, great, a Howling Mine. But you should be thinking, oh, no, a Howling Mine. Because when your opponent is playing with a Howling Mine, they have something up their sleeve. So he's going to draw two here after looking at this top four. So I'm kind of expecting some land removal to happen here. There is a Taiga tapping it for a Birds of Paradise, just attacking here for two. I'm a little bit surprised. Because remember, it's so important not to let Rob get to that three black mana because then he can play in Underworld Dreams. So I'm really expecting him here to play out his third black mana source and play out in Underworld Dreams. Let's see if that's going to happen. There we see a Badlands. There we see the Underworld Dreams. So now kind of the pain starts. And this is quite interesting for Guillaume because if he chooses 
to use his Sylvan Library here, he will get four damage because you're drawing the four cards and then putting them back. But the thing is, it's optional. So Guillaume chooses not to use a Sylvan, so he only draws two. So that's a really good decision by Guillaume. And he's playing Hammerheim, tapping four, not for a Living Plains, but playing an Icy Manipulator. And that's actually interesting because he can use the Icy to tap down exactly, this is what he does now, to tap down the Howling Mine. So there are only two artifacts in the game of Magic that you can turn off by tapping them down. And that is Howling Mine and Winter Orb. So because Howling Mine is now tapped, it doesn't work anymore. And Rob only draws one and Guillaume only draws one. But the problem still remains with the Sylvan. I think if you're Guillaume, you really want to get rid of that Underworld Dreams, but he doesn't have access to any disenchants. I forgot if there's a Tranquility in the sideboard, because that would be actually quite handy against this deck, despite the fact that Guillaume himself, of course, is, has built a deck around Living Plains. I still think it's worth boarding in a Tranquility. So there's a Sylvan, by the way, on the side of Rob and Pass turn now to Guillaume. Guillaume playing a basic mountain. He's going to tap three. It's got to be a stone rain or an ice storm here. Ooh, falling star. So is he just playing it on the life total of Rob here? Going to drop him to 15. No, he's got... Okay, he took the wrong card out. <laughs> he's playing on ice storm now. I was already quite surprised. Why would you go and do that? Because, you know, Rob's still pretty high up on 18. So he's going to target the volcanic island. Interesting. He's going to attack for two. I was kind of thinking that he would continue targeting the black sources like he did in game number one. But of course, now by destroying Volcanic Island, you're kind of sure that he cannot uh, play out a bolt on the factory. So perhaps he's now going on that um, the aggro plan of just trying to deal as much damage with the factory as he can. And look at that, he's drawing an extra card. He's going to drop to 12. There is another blue source again, a Volcanic Island. I mean, if, if he has, it's so dangerous playing against the, the Underworld Dreams deck because it's so explosive. So he's going to draw a card. He's going to drop to 16. And he's going to play Living Plane, I think. No, it's Tsunami from the sideboard. Oh, that's pretty nice. Taking care of that one land, so it's basically just land destruction for one, but it's pretty good. If he has another land destruction spell, don't think he does because he's attacking with the factory. Only one mana open for the Icy, so he can tap down again the Howling Mine. And I think it's a really good decision here from, from uh, Guillaume to kind of tap down that Howling Mine. Because as long as Rob cannot draw into that extra card, his deck is just not working as well. And, and look at his life total already on 10. So I guess if you're Guillaume, you just want to keep hitting um, Rob here with your Mishra's Factory. He's a little bit in the tank here, which is a good sign. Obviously, he wants to get out of this position. I mean, this game is far from over. If, for example, if uh, if Rob can find another Underworld Dreams and a draw seven, I mean, he's almost won the game already. There we see a City of Brass. And there's a pass turn. And a damage, of course, for Guillaume dropping to 15. Tapping, tapping a lot. Are we going to see a Triskelion here? There's a Triskelion. 4-4 four, four creature from Antiquities. And that card is so good when you've got Living Plane out because you can just kill three lands on the spot using the Icy again on the Howling Mine and passing turn. I'm thinking right now, like a really good card against an Underworld Dreams deck is actually Underworld Dreams. <laughs> it would be, would be funny to have that in your sideboard when you're playing black. But I guess most decks that play black... Like we'll play with uh, with Underworld Dreams. So we see Rob again, a little bit in the tank here. I really wonder, maybe he's just on a huge land pocket or something. They really cannot find anything useful. There's a Bayou. He's going to tap his City of Brass, so he's going to make blue mana maybe? 
Gonna tap the Felwer. Gonna tap the Swamp. Or is he gonna play... Oh, he's gonna play Recall. I wonder what he's gonna get back. He doesn't have the Time Walk anymore, so he's gonna put a Ritual into the bin. And what's that? I believe... Yeah, that was the Lightning Bolt that he used on the Bird in uh, turn number one. So now he's got a Bolt in hand, which is super annoying for Guillaume, because when he attacks with his factory, he's gonna bolt it. On the other hand, he now has a 4-4 creature. It might actually be worth just animating and attacking. It depends on what he has in hand, of course. But then at least the bolt is out of hand. There we see another Sylvan, which is useless. Attacking it with the 4-4. Maybe I would have attacked with the factory as well, just to force him taking the bolt out. So he's gonna drop to five. Things are looking really good for Guillaume. He's gonna pass. He's gonna tap down a Howling Mine, but it looks like Guillaume is a little bit in the tank. Maybe he wants to play the Bolt on the life total. Oh, sorry, Rob is in the tank. Maybe he wants to play the Bolt on the life total of Guillaume. No, that's not gonna happen. Turn has been passed. Howling Mine has been tapped. There's that activation of the Sylvan. He's going to look at the top three cards again. The thing is with Sylvan, once you've looked at the top three cards and you kind of know what two of those three cards are, it's just not that attractive anymore. And also in this situation for Rob, where his life total is under pressure, he doesn't have the luxury to draw extra cards. So he's just going to draw the one, of course, because he's on five. And remember, the Trike's on the board, right? Trike is three direct damage as well. So next turn, Rob, or sorry, Guillaume can win this unless Rob can find a way out here. Playing another Howling Mine. At least that's going to deal some extra damage. So there's a huge untap, and in his step, there's a bolt on his life total. So he's going to go to 11, right? I assume it's on his life total. Actually, it's not on his life total. It's on the Triskelion. So that's quite an interesting move here. So the trike now has three damage on it. So that means that um, if Guillaume chooses to take a counter off, um, you know, it still has that three damage on it, so it dies. So it's quite an interesting move by Rob here. And we also see a Guillaume here taking two damage from, uh, of course, that one Howling Mind that's not tapped. So he does draw into two cards. It looks like he's actually looking at the top three. And, oh no, this is just his hand, by the way, sorry. So now he's gonna play out a living plane. So this is quite interesting. So now all the lands turn into one ones, and now, okay, there we see a falling star. The question is, does Rob have something against this falling star, or else it's pretty much game? He's gonna use the City of Brass. Are we gonna see a blue blast? Yep, there's a blue blast from the sideboard, taking care of the falling star. And this is really tough because yeah, now he's attacking, but remember, the trike still has three damage on it. And, you know, Rob has two potential blockers here, because they're now 1-1 one, one creatures. So the Bayou and the Badlands, he can block with those creatures. And one is actually enough to kill the trike. And I think that's what they're actually discussing right now. So they're saying, like Rob's saying, well, if you attack, if I block, it still has three damage on it. The Triskelion will die. Wow, what an interesting scenario here. The problem, of course, for Guillaume is, yes, he still has that icy open in one land, so he could choose to tap down one of the lands, but then, you know, Rob will still have one of the other lands left to block with, which is enough to kill the trike. And then in response, he can take the three counters off, but then, you know, Rob will still be on one life, so I don't think he can kill him right now. I actually think playing out the living plane is kind of what caused this weird scenario. If he wouldn't have played out the living plane, but if he would have just attacked with the trike, then I believe Rob would have been dead already because he's got no blockers other than the lands that are now blockers because of that living plane. So it's <laughs> it's really a, a weird scenario here. And, and both players are discussing the situation right now. And I think Rob is kind of explaining how it works with the fact that the damage stays on the trike until the end of the turn. At the cleanup step, the damage goes off, but it's still on there now. 
And now, I mean, if you're Guillaume, maybe you're like, oh, I thought it was already going to win. But I think the best move here for Guillaume is now just to untap the try, keep it untapped and passing turn. I mean, he'll still win it probably next turn. He's got so many lands, he's going to just swarm him. But he is going to give, it looks like he's going to give Rob another chance. And remember, it is an Underworld Dreams deck. So if he can find like a draw seven or some crazy like time walk and stuff like that, he can actually win this. I mean, dealing 12 damage with this Underworld Dreams deck is not unheard of. The, the scenario is basically now just, you know, if you're Guillaume, pass turn, hope for the best. If you're unlucky, you're going to die, but you still have a pretty big chance of winning. There are a few cards that can, can help Rob here still getting the victory. Looks like they're still discussing the scenario, though, and Guillaume looking at his one card... I mean, if, if, if that one card's a bolt, it's a completely different story because he's still got the tight guy. He could just play the bolt out. And remember, Rob doesn't have any access to blue mana. Looks like it's not. So he's just going to pass. I would still tap down. Actually, he can tap down the City of Brass now and then kill Rob. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. And then he's going to go down to three and then he can use the trike and that's game. Yep, that's game. Okay. <laughs> wow, what an interesting ending. And I, I do understand... Uh, you know, you want to understand what's happening. So I get it that both players took a moment here to assess the situation and discuss, okay, what's actually going on? But I'm happy with the outcome because it's 1-1 and I'm really looking forward to watch another game with these two decks. Very, very interesting. So uh, let's just go to game number three. Game number three, the decider here. What a start for Rob, by the way. Black Vice. Ay, 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 ay. That's not what you want to see if you're Guillaume. Let's hope for him he can get some cards out. There he goes. Birds of Paradise turn one. He's doing that in game one, two, and now in game three as well. There is a Badlands. Are we going to see a Bolt the Bird? Yes, a Bolt the Bird. Man, there's so many Bolt the Birds. And there's a pass. I believe five cards in hand for Guillaume, if I'm not mistaken. So he's taking two damage exactly. Well, actually four, so six in hand, I guess. He's going to drop to 13. Hammerheim, there's another Birds. There's a pass. So three cards in hand for Rob, who's taking turn. And if he can now play out an Underworld Dreams, yeah, wow. This is going to be really tough for Guillaume. I believe he's going to take two damage now, if I'm not mistaken. He's going to drop to 11 and, of course, take a point of damage for the Underworld. Drop to 10. There we see a strip mine. That's a little too late, I guess. Are we going to see a stone rain? We're going to see an ice, uh, icy manipulator. I want to say ice storm, but it's an icy manipulator. And I mean, icy is just too slow in this situation. He really needed some land removal. And there we see a felwer stone. And another pass. At least he's not going to take any damage from the vices anymore. So he's just going to take one damage. Going to go to nine. And there are no Howling Mines yet. So it's not over. Only one card in hand for Rob. So, I mean, that's looking pretty okay. And there we see an Ice Storm. Taking away the Underground Sea. And of course he can tap down a land with the Icy if he wants to. Looks like he's going to... Okay, so he's also going to strip. And that's, of course, interesting because he also could have chosen to just use the Icy to tap a land down. But he's choosing to strip instead and passing turn here. So, three mana sources here for Rob, who's just passing turn. Good news for Guillaume. Bad news is he's already on eight. Going to tap three. What are we going to see here? There is a stone rain. Yeah, of course, now that whole game is starting, right? Are we going to see a bolt in response? No, no bolt. That would have been really bad news for Guillaume. Ooh, this is actually a really good card. Because now Rob can choose to untap it and give an extra turn here to Guillaume. And then he also takes an extra point of damage with a time vault. There we see, yeah, a Shatter on the Time Vault. I think that's a very good uh, decision. The Time Vault is so risky. 
Rob having three cards in hand, passing turn. He's not really finding anything. And Guillaume is still slowly dying, but he's on a six-turn clock, which is more than enough, I guess. Then again, he's not really doing anything else. Needs to put some pressure on onto Rob here. There's Living Plane. Okay, that's something. Then he can pass turn, tap down the Swamp. Okay, that's what I would do at least. And there's another Felwer Stone. And a pass. Okay, this is looking kind of okay-ish for Guillaume. He can now attack, at least deal some damage. He's going to drop to 5, of course, because of the Underworld Dreams. Three cards in hand here for Guillaume. Three cards in hand for Rob. There we see an Ice Storm on the Swamp. I would just attack for the one point, keep the Lunderer open, attacking with both. First damage dealt. And those Felwer Stones, I mean, it's great when you play with Felwer Stone when your opponent has a City of Brass, but when your opponent doesn't, I mean, they're still good, but they're just not as good. There's an Underground Sea and a pass. There is a mountain. Of course, it has summoning sickness still. I wonder what Guillaume is going to do here. I, I guess I would just attack with four. Keep the birds open to tap down the underground sea next turn. Looks like he's going to play something out for four. Does he have an Urnum in hand? Urnum is the 4-5 from Arabian Nights. We haven't seen it yet, but I believe he plays with four of them in his deck. Going through his hand, two cards in hand still. No, he's going to attack with the four, of course. Okay, he's not going to play out anything. Attacking with the four. So that means Rob is going to drop to 14. Then he's going to tap down his C. I think that's a very good decision here. Good play by Guillaume. And of course, the big problem here for Guillaume is that he's on four and he's now going to drop to three. I mean, a Winds of Change is going to deal damage to him as well. It's so risky. A Bolt is enough to kill him. I mean, he's playing with Borrow Time, but I mean, maybe he's lucky and he can still win. Who knows? Looks like he's going to do an Alpha Strike, but he has to keep some blockers open for that one land of Rob, because he's probably going to tap down the Underground Sea again, and he wants to keep one mountain open to block the Volcanic, and I think that's a good decision here. Playing uh, or attacking, and we see Rob taking the damage. He really doesn't want to trade his Volcanic. There we see the Underground Sea being tapped again. Three cards in hand for Rob. Going to go to card number four. Playing out of Batlands with Summoning Sickness. Which is not too bad. I mean, it's another blocker. And I think if you're Rob here, you're really thinking, okay, Winds of Change is good enough. A Wheel of Fortune is good enough. There are so many cards he can draw into that are good enough. Lightning Bolt is good enough. Is he going to pass again? He's on 10. Guillaume's going to drop to 2 because of the Underworld Dreams. Does Guillaume have anything in hand here? Can he do something on the end step? Is that why he's in the tank? Or is it actually Rob who's in the tank? Going to look at his hand again. Three cards in hand. So he had a really explosive start with those vices. But after that, Rob basically didn't do anything else. And Guillaume's life all the way down to three. He's going to go down to two after drawing because of that Underworld Dreams. And it looks like Rob is trying to find a way out. But I think he's still got a turn though. He's going to go to two. There we see... a Chaos Orb. Ooh, that is interesting. Is he going to activate the orb? Probably, or probably, he's of course going to flip on the Underworld Dreams here. If he hits this flip, it's going to buy him time. And maybe it's going to 
pave the way to victory. And that's a hit. Underworld Dreams is a goner. Is he going to attack here? I think I would. Keep a mana open to tap down a mana source. But of course, I don't know what Guillaume has in hand. And he's passing turn here, so I'm expecting him to use his Icy. Using his Icy to tap down one of the lands here, perhaps an underground river. I mean, the thing that you don't want to do is you want to make sure that Rob doesn't have access to three black mana because then he can play an Underworld Dreams again. And there's a Howling Mine. Ooh, that is so risky. I mean, Guillaume only needs a Winds of Change, a Draw 7 spell, a Burn spell, and he's already there. Uh, what an exciting last game, and what an interesting match this has been. And you can see Rob is going through the motion. Trying to decide what to do and what not to do. He's on 10 still. Let's look at the amount of lands that Guillaume has. Guillaume has got 4 lands, so 4 one, one creatures, and of course that Lanora Elf that he can attack with. So that's probably, Guillaume's probably thinking, okay, how much, what can I do? How much damage am I going to take? He's actually going to attack with his two lands. That kind of surprises me a little bit. Because you would think Rob just really wants to go to that three black mana so he can play out in Underworld Dreams. There we see another Icy. And this surprises me a little as well because now... Uh, now Rob is not taking any damage this turn, and he's untapping with his land. He could have tapped it down. I mean, I think I, what I would have done is tap down the land and just deal three damage. And of course, tap that underground sea down in his turn, because it, it was already tapped. Put him, putting him on seven. But then again, it's easy from this position, and I'm not sure if that's the right deci decision. And of course, I don't know what's in the hand of Guillaume. And there we see Rob, you're looking at his hand, trying to find a way to still win this. I mean, he's so close. There's a recall. Going to put away a blue elemental blast. Oh, he's going to get back the bolt, right? Going to get back the bolt. He needs one more turn. And he's won it. One more turn. Can Guillaume find something? To help him, to save him here from the bolt. Going through his hand. Oh, no, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Congratulations, Rob, for winning this. What a great final game, man. I think, I think this match really deserved this ending. Very, very exciting. Thank you both for sharing your match here. And uh, let's look at the winning deck here. Dream Walkers by Rob Hackney. And I would like to thank you as well for watching another game right here on Timmy Talks. Let me know if you are as excited as I am about this game. Really nice. I love seeing living plane decks because I'm still working on mine. It's still a work in progress. Uh, if you want to see more living plane, by the way, I'll put a little info card with another living plane match. It's uh, just fun. And I also have a lot of Underworld Dreams decks on the channel. So it's always interesting. I love seeing uh, Rob using, abusing, I should say, the recalls in his deck. The recalls were really the, the MVP. If you if you look back at the match, they gave him game one, they gave him game number three. So what a good card that is. For now, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to support the channel, please like, um, comment, and also share this on your socials if you like uh, this video. And um, if you're new to the channel, welcome here on Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And before you leave, there's one more thing I'd like to tell you, and that is that Timmy Talks also has a Patreon page. And um, if you want to support what I do, and if you want to support the channel financially, becoming a Patreon is the best thing to do. And you can do that by clicking on the link that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, where you can check out how you can support my channel. It already starts with $1 a month. And the cool thing is, it will give you access to the Timmy Talks Discord, 
to the Timmy Talks events and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at our amazing, fantastic, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go! Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.